day three of your Hacking Your Cycle tips and training. I'm really excited for all the comments that you guys have shared already. I'm really excited to, to hear who's going to implement some of these tips over the next couple months and uh, keep posting in the group to share uh, as you experience the differences because you might be surprised how dramatic the differences are, but also how quickly implementing some of these tips can make a difference. So I'm really excited to hear about that. So we've already talked about nutrition and we already talked about uh, caffeine, and, or sorry, sugar, I just spoiled it. Today we're talking about caffeine, yes. So uh, we'll get there. Um, but my name is Kylene Derhune. I'm a personal trainer and functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. So I work with my clients through functional lab testing to help them dig deep to the root cause of their chronic health conditions. And so this week, I'm just excited to share with you how I have learned how to hack my cycle so that I don't have PMS and that it's not something to dread anymore. It's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about caffeine. And uh, if, if uh, yesterday's topic on eliminating sugar didn't scare you away, awesome. I hope today's topic on getting rid of caffeine doesn't either. I know that some of these seem really overwhelming and really hard, but I can promise you that the only reason it seems that way is because your body is addicted to some of these substances and when you really embrace some natural changes and let your body sort of get back to the foundation of the way it was designed to work, then it works properly and you don't have cravings for these things anymore. I know in our society today, caffeine is like drinking caffeine and being addicted to caffeine and hitting Starbucks every day is like a cool thing, right? Um, it's, it's like you're not cool if you don't drink coffee. It's like you're, you know, you, that's my oven. And uh, so I can totally understand, and believe me, I've been there, I have really struggled eliminating caffeine. So over the past several years, I've done it several times for several different reasons. And the reason I keep bringing it back in is because I love the taste and I love it. Now there is a time and a place to enjoy it and we can talk about that a little bit. But when we're talking about getting rid of awful PMS and balancing your hormones, caffeine really does not have a place in that uh, system. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything like we talked about a couple days ago to really nourish our bodies. So today I'm going to share why caffeine can be a problem. I'm going to read a quote to you from mylola.com and they are quoting a study. Um, so there was a study of over 400 healthy premenopausal women and it found that women who consumed a lot of caffeine, over 300 milligrams daily, were twice as likely to have a short menstrual cycle, less so less than 25 days. So that's a luteal deficit is what that is. We talked about the follicular phase in the beginning, the, the ovulatory phase in the middle, the luteal phase uh, on the last end of your cycle, and this would be a luteal deficit where that phase is shortened compared to women who didn't drink coffee. So they were uh, twice as likely to have a short luteal phase. Um, the mechanism by which caffeine may alter the duration of the menstrual cycle is not clear, but such an effect could, could occur via the effect of caffeine on sex hormones or the hormone receptors. So while uh, a shorter period or uh, cycle, excuse me, while having a shorter cycle um, may not seem like a big deal, it kind of is. Um, we want to make sure that it's consistent for one thing, and we also want to make sure that your hormones are balanced in the appropriate ways so that it uh, hits the duration and the natural cycle that we want. So it's typically around 28 days, now maybe a few less or a few more, uh, depending on who you are. It may change a little bit from person to person, and that's okay too if it's like very consistent with you. But what we're talking about here is a change in normality. So if you normally have a really consistent cycle and maybe it's short, or if this has been going on for a long time and you consistently have short cycles, this can be a problem. So remember when we talked about why you start bleeding in the first place, the hormones dip. And so they drop to a certain point and it signals to your body that it's time to shed that lining and uh, start the process over again. So if this is happening too soon, you can see that 
obviously the, the hormones are being affected in a negative way. And caffeine has actually been shown to, uh, or coffee has actually been shown to sometimes affect estrogen um, in a positive way and in a negative way. So uh, if you're struggling with things like this, it's something that you don't really want to bring in. Okay, so that's one way that caffeine can be a problem. It also stimulates your adrenal glands um, and actually mimics stress. So we talked about stress a little bit and uh, the release of cortisol. Well, coffee essentially does that same thing. So the reaction that you would have if you were in traffic and something happened and you throw your arm protectively out, hi Megan, and you say, oh no, you, and you brace and you throw on your brakes, you know, you're in that acute stress phase and your brain sends signals to your adrenals to release cortisol and to release adrenaline so that you are aware and that all of that is flooding through your system, right? Well, coffee does that actually. Caffeine stimulates your adrenal glands as if you are under stress. And so when we are doing this consistently day in and day out, and usually for most of us, many times throughout the day, you are taxing your adrenal glands and you're putting your body under chronic stress voluntarily. So this can be a problem because when you have uh, high rates of cortisol in your body or chronic stress and chronic cortisol levels in your body where they don't really go down, which is what happens when you keep stimulating it, right, with the caffeine, Cortisol uh, makes it very, very difficult for you to lose weight, which um, can contribute to uh, negative PMS symptoms. The more excess weight you have, the more um, likely you are to have some PMS. Um, but it also makes it very difficult to lose weight. So if you have chronically um, elevated cortisol levels, it stimulates uh, your body to hold onto fat, specifically around your midsection, but then it also makes it very, very difficult to lose weight. So this is just a consideration. It's not saying that anybody who drinks coffee multiple times a day is going to gain weight or anything like that. But when you're trying to target a specific health concern, you wanna know all the factors that can play into it and you wanna make the best choice for you. So whether you choose to eliminate caffeine altogether or you just kind of tuck this in the back of your mind, that's up to you. But knowing what it does is really important. So regardless of the reasoning or what your goals are, eliminating caffeine in the afternoon is always important because again, we don't wanna constantly be stimulating our bodies throughout the day like that. So if you choose to use caffeine, use it the most effective way, which is one cup in the morning, about one to two hours after you wake up because that first two hours, your cortisol naturally is at its highest rate. So go ahead and use your natural energy. And then the coffee has a long half-life, which means that the, the milligrams of caffeine stay around in your bloodstream for a long period of time, and then they cut in half, and then they cut in half. But that process takes most of the day for most people. So if you drink your one cup of coffee around you know, two hours after you wake up, that half-life is gonna carry you through the day without continuously pouring on more. Is it the caffeine in coffee that does it? Yeah, it's the caffeine. So when I'm talking about coffee, I'm really talking about caffeine. Now there's, uh, re uh, there's some other considerations when you're talking about decaf in terms of uh, any of the benefits typically that you might actually see health-wise from coffee that have been touted like the antioxidants and things like that sort of go away when you talk about de decaffeinated coffee. So there's, unless it's just for a flavor, there's really no reason to drink it. But yes, specifically I'm talking about the caffeine. Um, the other thing that is really interesting is that caffeine has been linked to breast tenderness. So if that is something that you struggle with, usually like the week prior to um, your uh, cycle starting, then um, that's something really to consider as well, either diminishing or eliminating it altogether, and then notice the difference that that makes. Because I've been through phases as well where it's like, holy crap, this is painful, and then other months it's like totally not. So um, that is absolutely something that can affect that as well. And then cramping. So this is a really interesting thing. So caffeine is a vasodilator, which means it constricts the blood vessels and can can contribute to muscle cramping, which is absolutely the last thing that we want on our cycle. 
I mean, that's usually like the worst symptom, right? So we don't want to drink anything or eat anything or could take any painkillers or anything like that that has caffeine in it that may contribute to that problem. Now, a little side note that's very interesting. Caffeine can actually be really beneficial in eliminating headaches and migraines. But when you're talking about muscle cramping and uh, PMS, it's something that you want to eliminate altogether. So what does this mean for your coffee consumption? If you are struggling with multiple health issues, maybe you're struggling with PMS and anxiety and some gut health issues and these sorts of things, I would eliminate it, eliminate it altogether 100%. And I know that's hard, but you may actually find that you have more energy when you eliminate it than you did before while drinking it. And I know that's kind of surprising, but sometimes our body does surprise us. And it's something that we've been... Uh, really dependent on for our energy you need to get to the point where you allow your body to do its own thing and the other the other thing to think about there is if you're dependent on a stimulant for energy then maybe you need to take that stimulant out to see how your body is actually functioning if you cannot function with caffeine or without caffeine excuse me then you've got some work to do and maybe that means you have some um, changes to make maybe that means you need to prioritize sleep more maybe that means you need to prioritize um, stress relief and things of that nature but if you cannot function without caffeine we have some underlying work to do so what does this mean if uh, you're like, oh, I just love the taste and I really want it. And, um, you know, some of us are black and white and we are just sort of like, I'm going to eliminate it altogether. But I know others need steps. So that's okay too. If you need steps, make this a process, make this a goal. And here are some thoughts to kind of get through it. So day one to 14 of your cycle. So those first two weeks that we talked about, if you're working on sort of cutting back on your caffeine, the goal would be to make sure that it's only one cup that it's before noon because of that half-life that we talked about. You don't want it to affect you into the period of day where you're trying to slow down and actually get some sleep at night. So remember that half-life lasts a really long time for most people. So um, days one to 14, you're gonna drink one cup of coffee before noon. And because of the sugar and everything that we talked about yesterday, we wanna make sure that it is black, okay? So if you find a creamer that is like, you know, uh, basically just full fat coconut milk, fine, but uh, find a coffee that you enjoy drinking black. That's gonna give you the most benefit. And if you do it before noon, that's even more helpful. And if you stick to one cup, that's even better. And if you do organic, that's even better because there are some uh, molds that can uh, be found in coffee. So you wanna make sure that it's a high quality source if you do choose to drink it and that you limit that consumption. So day one to 14, you stick to one cup. All right, and then days, the second half basically, days, well, the third week, days 14 to 21, then you start weaning off and you do maybe one, uh, half a cup or you do a uh, half caffeinated. Um, and then the last week of your cycle coming into right before you start your period, you're gonna go only decaf if you have to have it. Um, if you don't have to have it, then just skip it that week altogether. So that's sort of the tapering down method. Now, when I uh, eliminated it, so I kind of did a process like that. What I would do is I was like, okay, I really got to get this under control. So I'm going to start eliminating things like sugar and caffeine. I'm super, I'm going to get super focused like 10 to 14 days before my period, right? So that was kind of step one. So 10 to 14 days prior, you get really intense, you start tapering down and you get rid of the caffeine and the sugar. Um, and then as you begin your cycle and start it again, you can bring that in a little bit. If it's something that, you know, you find that your body handles well and you can keep it to one cup and it's something you really enjoy, that's okay. Now, ultimately, if you can eliminate it altogether and just bring it in as a treat, that's great too. And that's maybe even more beneficial long-term because then you can really enjoy it. Um, and again, just make sure it's a high quality thing and you can go on vacation and maybe savor a great espresso or a cappuccino or something like that. But when you're talking about PMS, it's best to eliminate it if you're really struggling. And the first step would be to just prioritize those last two weeks. I hope that that helps and I hope I didn't scare you all away. Um, really curious, share your thoughts below. What, are, what is your reaction to this information? Is it something that you knew? Is it something you sort of had a hunch maybe affected your period but you didn't want to give it up? Are you willing to give it up? Who's going to act on this information? I would like to know. All right, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.